Okay, we are rolling. We are rolling, brother. Champions of Champions Boxing Talk here, and we have entered the Twilight Zone, officially. Uh, I was going to do a post-fight reaction to Canelo Kovalev straight after the bout, to be honest, but I've needed this time to process exactly what I saw last night. And what an absolute bizarre event. Let's start from the end and work our way back. Kathy Duva said that Canelo Alvarez is the fighter of our generation. I mean, there are so many question marks on top of this guy's head. It's untrue. Somebody asked me, where do I rank Canelo Alvarez in the pound for pound list now after this victory? I don't know. It's hard to figure out what is fact and fiction with this guy. There are so many baffling things from positive drug tests to fights that look close and uh, go to the scorecards and then he wins it 11 rounds to one and things like that. And last night was just the latest in the most bizarre episode of the boxing era, in my opinion. Whew, where do you start? I mean, first of all, the fight was delayed because it didn't want to clash with the UFC. And honestly, it was an hour and a half before the fight, which was scheduled at a certain time, actually got underway. And you got the... Na I mean, I couldn't... But how many national anthems did they want to sing? How many sponsors did they want to announce? Canelo Alvarez in the dressing room, his face was an absolute picture. He looked really annoyed. Just go back and watch some of them behind this, you know, the behind the stage in the locker room and you will see a Canelo Alvarez that is not happy. He was all warmed up, ready to put his robe on and I'm sure he got word that, oh, there's a UFC main event going on. He looked really angry. That was the first bizarre thing. The second bizarre thing was the crusher looked too relaxed in the back, in my opinion. The guy was, like, sleeping on the couch. Not a care in the world. Fast asleep, which was an omen for what was going to happen. Right? So you got all that stuff. Then the fight starts. Now, I watched this fight with a casual. And let me just tell you, sometimes us people that are really into a sport think we see it all, and we don't. You'd be surprised what somebody outside of sport, a casual, actually sees when they're watching this sport. Right? Round one. Kovalev wins the round for me based on his jab. But it is a bizarre jab. It is a jab with absolutely no pop on it at all. Not even any enough pop to hit Canelo's arms for Canelo's arms then to go whack into his own face. I mean, I'm talking that... I told the casual that this guy Kovalev was a power puncher. Needless to say, this casual was very disappointed. But of course, being an experienced fan and watching many fights, I thought to myself, well, it's a feeling out round. But just because Kovalev had that reach in front of Canelo's face, I give him the first round. The second round, Kovalev is doing the same thing with the jab. Okay, sometimes these fights with top technicians could take a bit of time to build head of steam. Third round goes, fourth round goes, fifth round goes. You get the story. And I'm watching a guy who is renowned as one, whose jab is renowned, I should say, for being the equivalent to a power punch. And the jab last night looked like Pauli Malinagi's. Can you imagine me saying before that fight, that Sergei Kovalev's jab is like Pauli Malinagi's. If you had watched Kovalev for the first time last night and watched Malinagi, you would not have seen much of a difference in the power on that jab. Let me just tell you that. It's as bizarre as this. 
Can you imagine Polly Melanagi turning up tomorrow? Right? And I'm not I'm not knocking Polly Melanagi. He did what he did in the sport out of sheer will, determination and skill. But power was not his forte. Let's just be honest. But can you imagine Polly Melanagi turning up in a fight and knocking a guy out with the first jab he throws? That is the reverse to what we've seen last night. One of the biggest jabbers in the game become one of the softest. I was absolutely baffled. Baffled. I mean, Amir Khan's jab had more effect on Canelo Alvarez than Kovalev. Golovkin is a middleweight and his jab had more of an effect on Canelo than Golovkin's did, Mayweather's did. None of these guys are supposed to be on the same level in terms of power as Kovalev. And yet you saw Canelo's Alvarez, his head snap back when he faced the other guys at times. Second bizarre thing. Kovalev, can anybody tell me, did he throw a right hand in the whole fight? I can't remember. It, he was a one-handed fighter in there and the one hand he did use was in terms of power, absolutely useless. Yes, he was winning rounds because he was touching Canelo and so forth. But I said to the casual, he's going to have to start putting a bit more on this. Because it's not going to be enough. You can't just beat Canelo with a jab. He's going to come with combinations at some point and land. And, of course, Canelo Alvarez did. But another bizarre thing. Kovalev landed some jabs. And they were crisp, no power. But Canelo seemed to back off. Kovalev followed Canelo to the ropes and then threw nothing. Nothing. And in terms of how Canelo fought, by the time round eight or nine came, he was Kovalev had suffered no Anthony Yard moment where he was hanging on for dear life, taking blunt punch after blunt punch. And didn't Kovalev take Anthony Yard's punch? A natural light heavyweight right so then we get to round 11 and the fight at this point you see it was such a bizarre fight that even the judges had it close the usual canelo alvarez judges <laughs> which usually have them a mile ahead one had it even and the other had canelo by i think a point or two at that right i had the fight in the 11th round possibly evenish right but i was baffled by kovalev it looked on purpose, right? I don't like to go down this route, but that jab was right there in Canelo's face and all he could do was tap with it. Tap. It was like a baby. Where was the snap? We know Kovalev has got that in his locker. He's proved... He knocked Anthony Yard out with a jab, more or less. And there he is with Canelo Alvarez, who is a far better fighter than Anthony Yard, but you get me point. People said, well, Canelo's punching may have made Kovalev tentative. What? From round one, two, three? He hadn't taken anything of any significant nature during those early rounds. It's usually you fight your style, you get hit with something, and then you retreat. But Kovalev, I really didn't see him badly hurt until the alleged finish. But no right hands. A powder puff jab. When you know Miguel Cotto buzzed Canelo more than Kovalev. Miguel Cotto is a welterweight going up to middleweight. Gennady Golovkin has never fought at light heavyweight in his life. And arguably he beat Canelo in that first fight. But here you've got the supposed crusher. Looking all relaxed and calm and like he hasn't got a care in the world. And Canelo even offers him a chance to fire shots on the ropes, but Kovalev refuses. Right. Very strange indeed. Amir Khan threw more power punches. 
was more of a two-handed fighter than Kovalev. Actually marked Canelo up a little bit more than Kovalev. Miguel Cotto went the distance with Kovalev. That's a damn well to wait going up to middleweight. It's strange. You tell me that that is not baffling. And then the finish. And this is where the casual sort of puts some ideas in my mind. When Kovalev wobbled, I wonder what for. The same shot had been hitting him all night, doing nothing. But it seemed like a right hand. And Kovalev, to me, it looked like a, b a bad attempt to do a delayed reaction. You know when your legs go when you've been hit hard? Kovalev looked like, oh, th this is the moment where I'm supposed to wobble. It looked like that. Right? <laughs> it did. It looked like that to me. Then Canelo lands. I think it's a another hook around Kovalev's guard, right? On the earlobe, you know, again, I think Kovalev have been taking some of them. But all of a sudden, Kovalev is like Bambi on ice. And then Canelo finishes him with one shot, and it's just waved off from there. That was all she wrote, and that was all... <laughs> the Twilight Zone episode you want to see. I mean, Canelo's hit, Canelo's hit lower guys... Rocky Fielding didn't go down like that. Rocky Fielding, it took body shots and concussive, shall we say, accumulation to stop him. Kovalev, he's in the fight. He's not doing exactly what he should be. That jab was questionable. There was no right hands, but he's in the fight. He hasn't been punished much. And then, bum bum. Finished easier than Rocky Fielding. Fin I mean, Canelo had to fire a worldie to knock out Amir Khan. There's Kovalev. It was bizarre. Now, here's where the casual comes into effect again. He said to me, man, that's fixed. That's fixed. He said, I don't know anything about boxing. But that guy had his hand in front of the other guy's face and arms all night long. And he just flicked his wrist at him. All night. And you know something? Whatever you think of the finish, when you watch that stuff, the casual's right. That's what all Kovalev was doing. Versus the, you know, massive snap of the head back jab that he was giving Anthony Yard. Even that he was giving Andre Ward. Right? Andre Ward, one of the best defensive fighters. I think a better defensive fighter than Canelo. Kovalev can't get his, his jab through Canelo's guard, yet there he is, pouncing Andre Ward's head back with it. And Bernard Hopkins! I know Hopkins was old, but that guy's defence is better than Canelo's. And there Kovalev was. I know he was in his prime, but still, the last to go is the power guys, right? There he is, dropping Hopkins, pouncing his head back with that jab. Right? Where was that last night? And Buddy McGirt said before the fight, the key is to punch when Canelo punches. It looked to me like on the night, Kovalev did that snidey jab and then waited for Canelo to fire. The, the total opposite. When did Kovalev punch when Canelo punched? He didn't. Where was the jab to the body? You can't say that it wasn't on. Canelo was there right in front of him, walking him down. It wasn't as though Canelo was using his footwork, side-to-side -side motion and all that stuff. It was Kovalev on the move. But I said, didn't I, in my breakdown, that Kovalev's jab has variation. He can use it as a range finder, snap your head back, or turn it into a power punch. Last night, it was just a, fl a flick of the wrist. That's all it was. And as the casual said, that looks on purpose. How can you have your hand in front of a guy like that and not do what you've already done? All right, Canelo could have beat him down and finished him anyway because he's getting older. But still, the power is the last to go. Now, the two biggest wins of this year on paper was, of course, Canelo beating Kovalev going up them weight classes. And, of course, 40-year-old Manny Pacquiao toppling Keith Furman at 30. 
But watch Keith Furman's effort, even though he's losing. Watch Keith Furman's effort in the final rounds against Manny Pacquiao. Keith Furman is trying to throw power punches. He's trying to use the jab well. He's trying to be assertive as the bigger man at some point. None of that with Kovalev. None of it. You can look back and say Keith Furman lost, but he put some effort in. He even got up off the canvas to try and bridge the gap. Kovalev. No, I don't know. I, I'm not saying that there's a conspiracy here or anything like that. But the casual who has no ties to boxing, he's not worried about anybody calling him a casual because he is a casual. He blatantly said to me, that stuff is rigged. He said, you know, the, the only difference between the sport you watch and the sport I watch, WWE, is that WWE is more real. And Canelo Alvarez and all the stuff surrounding him is the reason why people have that perception in boxing. Not just him, but he's part of it. Now, of course, Canelo Alvarez does bring in huge revenue and huge ratings. But that isn't all because, you know, he's a tremendous boxer. Which, I'm not taking anything away, I do think he's got talents. This is the tragedy. His career is being blighted by this kind of stuff. People will remember dodgy decisions against Golovkin. Nearly robbing Mayweather when he'd been beaten 11 rounds to one. Right? There were others. Lara arguably beat him in some people's eyes. But the judges had it ridiculously scored for Canelo the other way. I mean by, I mean by rounds to spare. The same with Austin Trout in a close fight. Yes, you could give it to Canelo. But by God, I think they give it to Canelo by multiple rounds. Right? Cotto's fight. Ten rounds to two. That was scored by some judges. Ten rounds to two. That was a seven to five fight. I, I scored it for Canelo, but it was competitive. But you've got all of this, and even the second Golovkin fight. In a fight that could have gone either way, it goes Canelo's way. It's never the other guy's turn. But arguably for the first time last night, maybe there was a guy in there helping Canelo. In other words, the judges had it close going into that 11th round. Had Kovalev got to the final bell, a lot of fans were scoring it for Kovalev, even despite that pathetic jab, right? And no power punches at all. No assertiveness, no aggression. The crush you did not was, was not there. Now, people say, well, he's passed it. Well, I've seen him at least attempt to be the crusher a couple of times recently. There was no attempt last night. None. He was fighting such a good fighter. He was fighting such a good fighter in Andre Ward. But he still tried to be the crusher. May have come unstuck, but the point was he tried, right? Nobody's telling me that Kovalev could not punch harder than Miguel Cotto. Nobody. Nobody's telling me that Sergei Kovalev can't throw a right hand like Amir Khan. Maybe not the same speed. Nobody's telling me that Sergei Kovalev's jab overnight turned into polymelanages. Nobody. So whether you think this is conspiracy or not, there was something off last night again. That's right. I've lost my initial point, but another question. As I said, it's mad his career, this stuff. People just turn up to watch Canelo the Boxer, but there's another crowd, like myself. He's good for gossip, isn't he? Right? You got it's like a freak show. You're wondering what controversy is gonna show up tonight. Canelo's fighting. It's not like uh watching Gennady Golovkin and thinking, will he knock the guy out? Is he past his prime Th those normal boxing questions? <laughs> Canelo Alvarez, it's what could happen? You know, could could the MMA suddenly invade the dressing room and start fighting with Oscar De La Hoya? Could Oscar De La Hoya be sat there with Eddie Hearn playing cards and 
not realise that Canelo's forgot his boxing gloves. I mean, it's so bizarre, but it is must-see television with him now. And again, it is not all for boxing reasons. If you want to know why Mayweather never rematched Canelo Alvarez, just look at that stuff. I mean, people say, oh, if, you know, the stacks were always stacked in Mayweather's card. You know, everything was for him. Mayweather has got nothing on Canelo. Nothing. Canelo wins when he loses. Right? And... All his wins, major wins, he doesn't separate himself from his opponent. He does enough. There is no 11 rounds to one stuff with him. Mayweather did that stuff. Yes, he wasn't knocking everybody out left, right, centre. But he was able to pull himself away from his opposition by multiple rounds. Right? That Mayweather, back then, this Canelo, the Canelo I saw last night still doesn't beat Prime Mayweather. He'd be for the taking, I'm sorry. In fact, I think Mayweather may beat him even worse. Canelo, Canelo last night made Kovalev's feet look fast. I was surprised. Kovalev is who I thought would be a little bit aggressive. Turned out to be so tentative. And who I expected to be fast was a little slow. And Canelo wasn't exactly cutting the ring down. He was just walking him down because that jab was no opposition. It gave Canelo no fear of Kovalev whatsoever. Right? But the casual said to me, that stuff is rigged. Kathy Duver was more complimentary to Canelo than I think I've even heard Oscar De La Hoya, which I had suspicions when, when Canelo looked so peeved off in the dressing room. I actually thought that, oh, maybe this suits Kovalev. Maybe because he's had a spat with Oscar De La Hoya recently, maybe Canelo could get robbed here tonight. Who knows? Of course, that was all, you know, hypothetical thoughts from me at that point. Kathy Duver. Canelo is the fighter of this era. Well, he could be if we knew fact from fiction, like I've just said. But she was more complimentary about Canelo than her own fighter. I mean, what? No matter what, she said, but apparently words to this effect, and I'm paraphrasing. No matter what happens, we're happy. What? You're supposed to be competitors that word means something right but all of this stuff takes away some of the sizzle of Canelo's boxing ability Terence Crawford is doing things very cleanly to me in other words you're not leaving his fights thinking wow I wonder how he got away with that one. And you're not leaving Lomachenko's fights thinking, wow, whoo, Loma got away with that one there. Or you're not sat there thinking, Luke Campbell's not even trying against Lomachenko. He's just putting a, a sloppy jab out there and being, you know, walked down. Luke Campbell threw some lever at Lomachenko. Landed some good body shots that saved Luke Campbell from being stopped. Right? Linares dropped Lomachenko. In other words, these fighters are fighting against Lomachenko. Kovalev, who I know has talent, was just doing that jab. And not a decent one at that. That's the point. It's not like Kovalev is some guy with no power or no ability he has he's been a world champion on multiple occasions he's been in a pound for pound list and yet he does worse liam smith threw more bot uh power shots and right hands than kovalev did you know it is strange to say the least but it's must see tv but as far as ranking in pound for pound 
I don't know, so therefore, if I don't know if there's any doubt, I've still got to put the two head boys ahead of him. The two top boys, Lomachenko and Crawford, they still have to be there for me. But let's face it, Pacquiao's win over Furman looks more legit than that thing last night because Furman actually tried to, you know, win. So, I was educated by a casual on what they see. Right, and he was not impressed. In fact, he was saying to me, you were telling me this guy was the crusher. He could do this with his jab, that with his jab. Whereabouts, pal? And I said, you know, you have to watch the guy. <laughs> you have to watch his whole career. This was not, I don't know what it was. Maybe the soul of Polly Malinagi possessed Sergei Kovalev last night. I don't know. Then, of course, he watched some highlights on Kovalev and he looked at me and said, that was not the guy that I saw last night. Of course, people said, you know, opposition, great opposition, you know, takes away the strong points of your game. But you at least try and apply him. Andre Ward can disarm fighters, but they at least try to do what they do best. Kovalev tried to do what he did best. Heck, arguably he even beat Ward in that first fight. Yet against Canelo, oh no. It all disappeared. Everything went. The jab wasn't there. No right hands. No power punches. Back foot. Never asserted himself really. Never even did the typical big guy lean on the little guy stuff. Heck, even Canelo went back to them ropes and Kovalev was still flicking with his wrist. Guys. What the heck? What the heck? But anyway, that's my thoughts on it. Whew, it's been a controversial one. But, you know, the circus act that is Canelo Alvarez goes on. And this is Champions of Champions Boxing Talk. I think it's time for Kovalev to retire, by the way. <sighs> Gennady Golovkin, Kovalev made Gennady Golovkin look like Marvin Hagler times three last night. But this is Champions of Champions Boxing Talk. How about, brother?